What's up guys, Sean here, and today we're going to talk about Jank Uger losing his bid to be the representative for California's 25th district. So the results not only came in for Super Tuesday on March 3rd, but they also came in for a lot of the congressional races, including one that I had my eye on, Like a Hawk, which was California's 25th district, Katie Hill's old seat, that Jank Uger, founder of the Young Turks, decided that he was going to run for. Now in my last video on this topic, where I broke down why I thought Jank Uger's campaign was failing, and why I thought he would lose his bid for this seat, I actually pegged Jank Uger at getting around 5% of the vote. And this wasn't really a prediction that I'm going to take credit for now. I saw a poll on Twitter that said he would get 5%. And when I went to look for the poll in the editing process, I couldn't find it, so I assumed that that would actually be a terrible prediction on my part, because I might have been fooled by a Photoshop poll. However, if you go to the Business Insider results from this election, Jank Uger came in fourth place with about 5%. So I guess whoever put out that poll actually put it out accurately. So Jank Uger lost his race, and I know we were all cheering for his loss, but I would like to pause for a second and remember the moments that this campaign gave us along the way to Jank Uger's loss. And if the Republican Party agrees with Donald Trump, and they almost always do 100% of the politicians, then call them what they are. You are bigots. And by the way, if you vote with them, you're, you're a liar. Bigots. You're a liar. Okay, no, you're a bigot. You're a liar. You're a bigot if you're You're a liar. You see this? You counter-strike. You're a liar. You cannot tolerate bigotry in this country. Muslims are 100% You're a liar. American. The don't degrade my president or his wife. Well, I'll send okay. it for you. I will. And when I get do there, not do that. His ass. Do not. This is a forum where we are debating the issues. And if I don't agree with Trump, I am an American, and I will say that. And you will stand down. And I will say what I want to say then. Not here. Yes, I do. Now, had I seen this clip before I recorded my last video on Jank Uger's campaign failing, this clip would have been on the top of it. Here you have Jank Uger getting into a shouting match with an elderly man at a mosque during a caravan. Absolutely hilarious. And Jank Uger's like, we have to strike back. And he's realizing, or he should be realizing in this moment, that just shouting louder than your political opponents is not really an effective strategy. Because the result of this exchange was that the police were called and the event essentially got shut down because this old man was not going to take any nonsense from Jank Uger. Now look, in general, I do not think it's a good idea for people in the audience to interrupt other people's speaking engagements. I think that's crazy unproductive. I don't like it when the left does it, so I'm not going to praise it when people who are anti-Jank do it. But at the same time, this clip is in fact hilarious, and that guy is basically the hero of the internet for interrupting Jenk. Because even though Jenk's like, you counter-strike, and he goes after him all aggressive, you see that Jenk is not comfortable with this old man shouting at him. And in fact, Jenk called the police because he wasn't comfortable with the people shouting at him in that audience. And even when the police come, and Jenk has like calmed his tone, and he's trying to be diplomatic with the cop... The guy that was shouting at him does not care, and he runs up to the police, and he's like, listen, if you're going to throw out your opinion, I'm going to throw out my opinion, and I don't care what you say. They don't want to hear that. That's a lie. That's a lie. You made a statement about our president, okay? okay. And I rebuttal what you said. I have the right, have the right to express my opinion, whether you like it or not. You are expressing your opinion. And while I am, in principle, against people interrupting events like this, although I do want to carve out some exemptions for comedic purposes, it just goes to show you that Cenk Uger is not projecting the level of strength that he thinks he's projecting when he's on stage. Now, the reason I thought Cenk Uger was going to lose this race is because fundamentally his theory about how politics, and especially American politics, work is completely oversimplistic. Jenk and a lot of people in the progressive media, especially Kyle Kalinske, seem to believe that issue-based polling is the best way to determine what policies are popular amongst the American people. However, when you ask somebody if a policy is popular in the abstract, 
That doesn't mean necessarily when a candidate runs on those policies and when those policies are put under scrutiny that the candidate running on those policies that initially poll pretty well without any scrutiny will necessarily win that election. And a perfect example of this is one of the major planks in the progressive movements campaign and Jenks campaign specifically, and that's Medicare for All. Now initially when you poll Medicare for All, it actually does quite well. However, when you say that Medicare for All will take away people's private insurance, the polling numbers go down because now people feel like you're taking something away from them. Conversely, when you tell people that yes, we're taking away your private insurance, but you can keep your doctor and go to the same hospital, those poll numbers tick back up in the same direction. But on top of that, when you tell people that their taxes will be raised, middle class people that their taxes will be raised, like what will be necessary if you were to implement a Medicare for all system, the polling numbers go back down yet again. So again, while policy might be popular initially, when you poll people on specifics related to the policy, the popularity of that policy can fluctuate dramatically. And the reason that all those public opinion polls that I just told you about produce contradictory information is because most people aren't really following the policy that closely. Most people, if they hear something that sounds good, will say yes, they approve of it. And then if they're told that that will negatively impact them, their approval rating will drop down for that policy. Now, Cenk Uger and progressives feel like they are so correct, so right, and the American people are so on their side that they fail to see the nuances in public opinion polls and they cannot get the concept that I just laid out for you through their head. Look at the way that Nancy Pelosi talks accurately about the squad winning congressional seats in the 2018 election and compare it to the way that Jenk talks about it and see which one worked out a lot better. When we won this election, it wasn't in districts like mine or Alexandria's. However, wonder, I'm, I'm, she's a wonderful member of Congress. I think all of our colleagues will attest. But those are districts that are solidly democratic, this glass of water would win with a D next to its name <laughs> in those districts. Well, first of all, uh, I'm going to prove that this mythology that progressives can't win in purple districts is totally wrong. We represent the voters way better. Look, I don't like Nancy Pelosi, and a lot of people don't like Nancy Pelosi, but there is a lot of truth in what she just said. In her district and districts like Ocasio-Cortez's district and other districts where the squad ended up winning and getting into Congress, a glass of water with a D next to their name would have won that seat because those seats are solid blue districts. However, Cenk Uger was running in a purple district and despite what Cenk thinks, that it's a myth that an ultra progressive candidate can't win in a purple district, he lost in the purple district to a much more moderate Democrat. And it's not just Cenk who lost on Super Tuesday. There were a lot of primaries in a lot of purple districts with the Justice Democrats involved. And it turns out that the Justice Democrats, despite some of them having significant money advantages over their incumbent opponents, lost those races because they were running in purple districts. At the time of me filming this video, I believe that there is one Democratic primary race that is still too close to call between an establishment Democrat and a Justice Democrat, but the establishment Democrat is in the lead, and if that Democrat holds the lead over the Justice Democrat, that means that the Justice Democrats will have been wiped out completely on Super Tuesday. They will have no victories on the board. This is because people are actually campaigning against these people. This isn't an Ocasio-Cortez situation like I told you about in the last video, where the incumbent was too embarrassed to campaign against Ocasio-Cortez. Now speaking of money, Jenks' campaign was actually pretty good at raising money for CA25. He did come in third in fundraising, but he wasn't third by much. Everybody else was clustered around a million dollars, a threshold which Cenk Uger met. Now, unlike Cenk Uger's two opponents that actually raised more than him, the Republican Garcia and Christy Smith, the Democrat, Cenk Uger didn't spend nearly as much of his money as his opponents did on his race. In fact, he held on to about half the money that he raised for this campaign. So it seems to me that at some point during this campaign, Cenk Uger just accepted that he was going to lose this race. And I'm curious to see what he's going to do with that money because you can funnel that money into other campaigns if you want to since it all meets the individual contribution threshold. This money could also go to a super PAC and be used to help progressive candidates in other primaries, which would be hilarious because Jank Uger is so against money in politics and super PACs, and likely he's gonna end up forming one or donating his money to one.
Now, there were so many other gems that I missed in this campaign along the way, like Cenk Uyghur actually having a debate with a lot of the candidates that weren't Christy Smith before the town hall or the forum that I showed you in my last video, and the moderator just having none of Cenk's nonsense, telling Cenk that he needs to talk about his actual policies instead of referencing and attacking the other candidates, and Cenk Uyghur not having the ability to do that. Because if you think about it, Cenk Uyghur is running as a reaction. He said it in his original video that he's not trying to come as the accused, he's trying to be the accuser in these debates and as a candidate. Look, I don't come as the accused, I come as the accuser. But the thing is, there are rules and you need to follow those rules on a debate stage, otherwise you're going to look petty and ridiculous, and Cenk Uyghur on this debate stage look petty and ridiculous. Now I was hoping for a big concession video from Cenk Uyghur, and in fact, if a concession video gets released in the time that I'm editing this video, I will put clips of his concession in this video. However, all we got was a live appearance from Cenk Uyghur during Super Tuesday election night, where he looked like he was about to cry and the people at the Young Turks were basically trying to console him by saying that they were so proud of his performance in the Christy Smith debate, and they're so proud of him overall as a guy, and they're just sad that he had to put up with all the negativity throughout this campaign. So uh, the preliminary results don't look good. Um, I got it, we have votes still to count. Your, uh, uh, was it worth it? Meanwhile, Cenk Uyghur, as I said in my last video, his performance in that Christy Smith candidates forum was a disaster. He looked like an embarrassment, and Christy Smith ended up shiving him at the end of that forum by pointing out that this is clearly a publicity stunt on behalf of Cenk Uyghur. Well, I'm proud to be the only candidate on, on this stage again that's endorsed by In Citizens United and Indivisible because of my longtime commitment to this issue exactly. And my voting record is very consistent with that. And my contribution record reflects nothing like what's been expressed on this stage today. So I hope your stunt pays off. And all that this political stunt at the candidate forum ended up showing people was that Cenk Uyghur himself did not believe the nonsense that he was putting out there about him being the front runner in this congressional race. He knew that he was trailing behind Christy and he tried desperately to claw her down in order to lift himself up in this forum. Now again, trying to hit your opponent is a perfectly fine strategy during a debate, but this wasn't a debate, this was a candidate's forum where Cenk wasn't even getting asked the same questions as Christy Smith because there were so many candidates on the stage that they had to break them up into groups of three and ask them each specific questions to their group. Um, and look, uh, I have the best backup option on the planet, mm -hmm. which is to go back to the best job on the planet. Now look, even though I've been pointing out where Cenk is wrong and why his campaign failed this entire video and celebrating the fact that this man is nowhere near the halls of power, this point is something that I actually agree with Cenk Uyghur on. He already has a good gig, the host and founder of the Young Turks, a pretty successful online media organization, depending about how you feel on their finances at this very moment, with a dedicated audience that can send money and volunteers from across the country to help him in a congressional campaign. Being a representative in Congress is not as good a gig as this, but this was an ego trip for Cenk Uyghur. He wanted to win in Congress so that he could prove that he himself knew better than people in politics on how to be a politician. Now look, I'm not gonna say that Cenk Uyghur doesn't personally care about progressive policies. He's the owner and host of the Young Turks. So if he cared about something different, he could cover something different every day on his channel. I do believe he cares about the policies that he's advocating for. I think he's wrong, but I do believe that he does care about those policies. However, it is clear that this was not about the policies that Cenk cares about and advancing them further. This was 100% about ego. Look at the hour-long campaign ads, oh wait, I mean, objective news interviews conducted by Anna Kasparian with Cenk Uyghur, and listen to what he's talking about that he wants to do when he gets into Congress. He's talking about speeches that he wants to give on the floor of the House and Congress. He's talking about interviews that he wants to give as a media member where he's calling out Republican Congress people and Donald Trump. He's not talking about substantive policies. I'm sure he wants those policies, but he's thinking about the glory. He's thinking about the highlight reel. He's thinking about the progressives across the country thinking of him the same way that they think of Ocasio-Cortez, Rashida Tlaib, Ilhan Omar, and not really Ayanna Presley, but for some reason people include Ayanna Presley in the squad. What are you gonna do now? So okay. Imagine me on the floor of the house. Right. And they can't 
stop me. Imagine me in Congress. If I was in Congress today, you know the kind of speech I would have given on the House floor exactly like this. Well, I guess people are gonna have to imagine you in Congress, Cenk, because you didn't win your election. You came in fourth with 5% of the vote. Now, in my last video on this campaign, I very briefly mentioned Carl Benjamin, aka Sargon of Akkad's campaign to win office in the UK. And the reason I mention that is because I think that Cenk Uygur's failure in this congressional race is not only humbling for Cenk Uygur personally and people in the progressive media, but it should be humbling for online content creators who think that their reach supersedes what it actually is. Like I said in my last video, we have supporters, we have subscribers, but those subscribers are distributed across the country and they are not representative of a solid voting block like you need to win a congressional district. As I said in my last video, and it's as true in the UK as it is in the United States as it is in the Western world, a very low percentage of the population actually engage in politics. And an even lower percentage of that percentage are people who follow politics online. So the idea that you can parlay an online audience into a successful local election run is just not the case. You have to do the work in these local communities in order to get people to vote for you. There's not the level of fame that you think just from being known on the internet and going to events with people who know you from the internet. That's not representative of reality. Think about all the times if you're a big content creator that you get recognized at the airport, but think about all the people that you walk by every day at the airport that don't recognize you. The one that sticks in your brain is the one who knows who you are, but you don't notice the thousands of people who don't know you from a hole in the wall. Look, sight matters. It's one of your most important senses. There's a reason your eyes are on the front of your face, but as important as it is to see what's going on in reality, it's also important to know what you're not seeing. And look, even though I've spent a lot of this video making fun of Jan Kuger's campaign and talking about how he's fundamentally wrong about politics, this doesn't just apply to Sargon or Cenk Uger. This also applies to me and my channel. I have a good amount of subscribers, like 67,000 at the time of me filming this video, but if you look at my Patreon support or my Subscribestar support, it's significantly lower than 1% of my subscriber base. Now, I'm grateful that I'm able to make a living on this platform. Don't get me wrong, this isn't me saying, oh, support me, and another YouTuber pleading poverty. I can't stand that nonsense. But that is a humbling experience for me because I know that even though I can generate some views, even though I got subscribers, there is limited amount of support that I can get from individual audience members. And it's important to acknowledge your limitations and accept them and not ignore indicators of your limitations just because it makes you feel better not to see them. We have to be honest, political YouTube is incredibly small. You can be at the absolute top of political YouTube, but if you haven't put in the work locally, then you're not gonna win a local election. Those are just the facts. In reality, makeup YouTube and other larger, more celebrity-driven forms of YouTube have significantly higher chances of political success more than any content creator on this platform and a lot of content creators on this platform combined do due to name recognition alone. Now, maybe you disagree with what I just said, in which case you would be 100% wrong, but let me know your wrong opinion down in the comments below. If you like this video, then please show me by leaving a like. You can subscribe for more content. Follow me on all my social medias. Support me via one-time donations on Venmo or PayPal, or do so monthly on Patreon or Subscribestar. This has been me talking about Cenk Uger losing CA25 and the implications for the rest of people who try to parlay online fame into a congressional run. Till next time.